Hello there, sharks. I'm here with Alex Fitzgerald, the Assassinato. We're going to a hand today that you played about as bad as I've seen any <laughs> poker coach and coach play. Why'd you decide to play this one poorly? What went through your head in this hand that we're about to go through? I did something that I bet a lot of people do when they justify a bad play, which is they said I had a read. Oh, boy. And, yeah, we're just going to go from there. And I hope this is a lesson for everybody watching. <laughs> What you should do if you want to get better at poker is pick the hands that are the worst ones you played in any series, find a player that's better than you, and tell them <laughs> about them, and then get insulted, and you won't do it again. It's very true. Oliver's here recording today. He said, oh, I don't tell anybody my bad hands. <laughs> well, that's why you're recording in the camera. All right. Here we have a hand where Under the Gun raises it up. The 200. We have Ace, King, and the cutoff. Yeah. Normal re-raise. Maybe call if you feel like being nitty. Yeah. Here's a spot where you can have a read that under the gun likes their hand. You just call. Yeah. You know? You decide to make it a minimum. Yes, sir. Re-raise. What's the, So you say you do this sometimes. What is the purpose of this play? What are you trying to accomplish? One of the things I really like about doing this live, and I don't do it too often, but under the gun was giving me a lot more information than perhaps they should when it comes to physical reads, is if they look really grateful that it's just 100 more, you can just take off the top of their range. In which case, then I really love firing multi-shell bluffs later on in the hand because a lot of people will go, oh, it's just aces. That's why they did the dumb little click back. And then I get a lot of double barrels through. I don't do this that often, but I felt like bringing it in on this play. Yeah, so I'm just sitting here thinking about some of the videos I've made recently on YouTube and... I always say, why would they give you such amazing odds unless they have aces? Right. I, I, I hope. See, I try to listen to things like that and reverse <laughs> engineer it, but sometimes it doesn't work, as we're about to see. All right. So you announce aces, and then the small blind makes it 1,100. Do anything about the small blind here? So the small blind is a lady who's been pretty solid, but has had some tricks. And right when she threw the raise out, you know, sometimes when people throw raises out, it kind of looks like I got to get my nerve up to do this. I know this is the right play, but I don't want to do it. Mm. Yeah, it's not like very calm cutting the chips in, in which case it's like, oh God, what is that? It was kind of like, I know I got to re-raise this guy. I had a very active image at this point, And I felt like this could be a number of hands that I dominate at this point. I did not take this that seriously. All right, so... I want everyone watching today to keep that in mind under the gun folds and ask what should we do given that read with our ace king. You gonna make the nitty fold? Are you going to call? See the flop in position? You're gonna re-raise small to let's say 2200 or re-raise a normal-ish size, let's say 3500. Pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. How do you feel about the spots, given those reads? Don't fold, obviously. <laughs> Don't, like, rip it all in or anything like that, clearly. Right. So our options are call, re-raise, tiny, if you want to be really tricky. Mm -hmm. You already showed us you like being tricky. Or do you want to re-raise normal? I'm asking you. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> well, I'm feeling great at this point, so I value raise again. Uh, okay. 3,000 and change. Okay. Really hoping for the call. And... Yeah, looking to make some money post-flop. I'm loving it right now. So my one fear is that when we get to this point in the hand in this kind of weird manner, there's some portion of the time you've made your opponent's range really strong. Yes. If they continue. If they continue, right? Because if she did have some nonsense, I don't know, give her ace-10 offsuit, she's just going to fold, presumably. You think maybe not? I, that's what I assumed until I was playing a number of these events, in which case I started counting on one hand when I'd see people fold. Okay. So I decided I got to play this a little differently than I normally would. Some people don't like folding. Yeah, that's and a, true. Actually, a lot of people don't like folding, and they want to try to see five cards. Yes, sir. Because that's how you make a hand. Yes, sir. You have to get to the river to win the hand. Mm -hmm. Well, unless they fold. All right, flop comes, 8-6-2. Your opponent checks, pot 7,000. Probably just bet small with everything. Yes, sir. Question becomes, what is small here? I might go really small, like two. I like that a lot. Because when you go two, they are going to continue with a lot of stuff that, like you that you beat. But if you go bigger and bigger, say you go like, I don't know, six. Well, mm -hmm. now they're only going to continue with pairs, right? So 
A bet like six is probably especially bad. Yeah. So I think you probably want to go small and frequently because your range has aces, kings, queens, ace, king, mm-hmm. whatever. And they may be doing what you said because of your initial minimum re-raise of putting you on aces. Mm-hmm. In which case, if you have aces, like they're they're drawing thin anyway. Yes. So the amount you bet doesn't really matter all that mm-hmm. much. Very true. Just lets you get cheaper bluff through to some extent. So anyway, they check. You go three. I think three's fine. You think so? Because the more you're talking about it, the more I think you're right. <laughs> well, look, this is not a bet of six, right? Yeah, true. So the question true. is how what it, how small is small, mm-hmm. right? Because three is small. Three mm-hmm. is smaller than probably 95% of the people in this building would bet. They would right. they would just bet like 4,000 because that's normal, right? That's a good point. So I don't think your bet's terrible by any means. But as you go bigger and bigger, there's some line that you're going to cross that's going to make them start folding out king queen backdoor flush draw or whatever yes that you like you really want yes. to stay in so whatever i think small bet's fine okay um you, if you do ch- let it go check check on the flop you can't really be looking to fold all that often no no definitely not so that runs the risk of getting outdrawn sometimes whereas mm-hmm. in this scenario you get, you do get some folds and when it goes check check on the turn check check on the river you still win mm-hmm. the issue is like i said is you bet bigger and bigger when they call they're gonna have mostly pairs mm-hmm. which is really bad for you yes so anyway you go three she says, mm-mm. No. <laughs> eight. Eight with her set of eights. And she had a set of eights or a set of sixes or a set of twos. Well, <laughs> to be honest with you, I just, the thing that really got me about this hand is she had this raise chambered. The <laughs> second I put my bet out there, she had it out. Now, there's one of two things that could be. That's somebody who could understand, hey, this is somebody goofing off a bit. I need to check raise with some bluffs. But... I thought that was most likely just the joint or, hey, I got a really good flop with my queens. Cool. Let's go for it. This was a smaller buy-in. And I really impulsively snapped. I I really quickly folded without thinking through it. And my curiosity is, what do you think? Do you think that's way out of line or do you think that's like, meh, okay, let it go this time? I mean, I would definitely let it go this time. I think that, I mean, like, what are you going to do? The only time, like, so first off, how are you even going to defend against it? You're going to call, right. and then what? Like, not fold the turn? The problem with that is that whatever nonsense they have is going to outdraw you some some mm-hmm. chunk of the time. Mm-hmm. And if you jam, she just always calls okay. with all the good hands, so that's <laughs> not great. So you're, both of your continuing options are pretty bad. Yes. Um, I mean, I would just fold. And also, if you think about your range, you already told me it was only aces. I was hoping that would well, be what I'm saying. Well, al- almost only aces. <laughs> yeah. But it's going to be like aces and kings and queens and maybe right. ace king. I mean, who knows what you actually have. I know you do with 10-9 suited. Right. So <laughs> it's a off. spot where as long as you know your range is very well protected, you can fold out the bottom of your range. So is this ace king the bottom of your range? And it just is. Yep. So then the only way you can really consider continuing is if you think your opponent is just drastically over bluffing. In which case, if she is, then yeah, don't fold. But he can't know. I mean, I can't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Maybe you can know. So, you got to get out of the way. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Which you do. Mm-hmm. And if this was the worst hand that you played all World Series, it's not actually that bad. That's good to hear, because I, she had a few more moves I found out a little later. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I rethought this one a little bit more than I should. So, when you say she has a few more moves, you mean she was just, like, getting in there and being splashy and battly, right? She was playing well. I loved watching. So, let, let's just go back and take a look at this hand, if we knew that, which you didn't know it at the time. Mm-hmm. But... What I would probably do is I would just call the re-raise yes. pre-flop. I would not yes. four better to begin with because I just want to stay in position and not get blown off my hand that is almost certainly good, mm-hmm. right? So you would call, flop would come 8-6-2, she would bet something, you would call. Mm-hmm. Turn comes if it's a low blank, you probably just keep calling, right? Yes. And that induces her to bluff. Mm-hmm. Whereas this line you took doesn't really induce her to bluff because no. you look super strong, right? Right. So whenever you look super strong and your opponent's still putting in their money, I mean, maybe they're bluffing, but you have not really induce them to bluff because you look strong. But if you had just called the re-raise pre-flop and then called her flop bet, like, you don't look strong at all, which mm-hmm. is going to induce her to bluff, which allows you to way more easily call. So against battling players like that, I, I definitely try to just get to the showdown well, and go so. from there. But very often when you're playing, you don't know that. So you do what you can do. Yes, sir. That was a fine, fun hand. I don't mind it. That's good to hear. The only thing, The only thing I would... uh question is the minimum re-raise, but I think your justification for the minimum re-raise makes sense. Like, really, when if they raise to 200 early position, you make it 700 or 600 or whatever, it's not really getting much value whenever we're talking about playing 30,000 deep, right? Right. And you start to make people think you're a little, little creative, a little that, bit wild, a little that, bit 
Interesting. Anything I can do to not look like a professional poker player does seem to help later on. You have messed up by coming onto this YouTube channel today. <laughs> yeah. Got to wear that mask tight. Yeah, I you guess. blew up your spot. You're going to be wearing the COVID mask until <laughs> yes, 2032. Yeah. All right. That's going to be it for today. Thank you for being on here. Where can people follow you? Uh, go to pokerheadrush.com if you want content just like this every single day. Awesome. Thanks to all of you for being here. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe buttons below. Good luck in your games, have fun, and we will talk to you next time.